So, in this chapter, we will uh, learn how to build a dynamic application. So, dynamic application means that we have to switch between activities. Um, since an application is composed of multiple activities, we have to know how we can switch between activities and go back inside of these switches. So we can only launch an activities from another activity if this has been declared in the Android file, Android manifest file. Okay? Uh, we can only have one activity visible at each time. It means that you cannot have two activities that share uh, the screen. So a screen, an activity. If you want to change the screen, you have to change the activity or use fragments, but this will be seen later. So how to switch between activities? There are two notions. The first one is the notion of intents. It intents means intention. I want to switch something. I want to do something, intents. And the second one is backstack. The backstack is the stack of activities that are pushed or pop from an activity to another. Let's have a small example. We have the first activity, and the backstack is empty, except for the activity one. So we have a backstack, and every time where there is a new activity, the activity will be pushed on the top on this stack. Okay? So first of all, there is an activity, one screen, the back stack only contains the activity one. Then the activity one wants to run the activity two. To do that, we will use intent. I have the intention to launch another activity. So now the activity two is running. Since the activity two is running, the activity one is down on the stack and the activity two is running. And when the activity two is running, the screen display the activity two. Okay, so the screen display only the user interface for the activity on the top of the back stack. Okay, no activity two want to start activity three. So no, the activity three is visible for the user. And then the activity three is cancelled or killed or something. And we found our back stack as previously. OK? So two notions, the intent and the back stack. We cannot have an empty back stack. There, are, there is at least one element in the back stack. But we can have a, a stack that is as big as you want. OK, so I told you an intent is the intention of launching something, realizing something. So this intent is only a small message, an asynchronous message, which is, which is spawned on the intent bus, which is a bus that only contains intents and vehicle intents. And this message will be sent to something, to somebody, which is the activity two or the activity three. And when the activity two or three will receive this intent, it will be on the top of the back stack and then it can display its UI. So the intent bus is only dedicated to the circulation of intents and it allows the communication between activities in order to your application. Or you can also target activities that are not inside of your application. I mean, if you want to open the camera, you just have to <coughs> build an intent which say, oh, I have the intention to use the camera. And then some application that, is, is that can provide the, the camera feature will pop up and display. OK, so now that we have understand how intents works, we can start an activity only by creating the intent here we can see that the intent has two parameters. The first one is, what is the current context? This 
I'm displaying, I'm on the top of the back stack, so I can have a decision. And the second one is uh, who I want to run. So here's the second activity. We can also fix some additional data inside of the intent. It's an associative uh, key value uh, type. And we can run start activity with the intent. Once this is done, we can inside of the onCreate method of the second activity grab the intent through the method getIntent grab the value thread through the method getIntExtra and do something. Okay? So onCreate is a starting point of your application and from this, you can do something. OK? We can also note that when we perform a get int extra, we have to position a second uh, value, which is 0 here, which is the default value if the previous activity didn't fix uh, the required value. So. We have two activities. We know how to switch. But if you run this example now, it will fail. Why? Because you didn't declare the activity inside of the manifest Android manifest file. So once more, this is the most important file in your application. You just have to, to write two lines, activity, main activity, activity, second activity, and this is it. So, to summary, we can see that when our activity receives the intent, it becomes visible. Uh, it is pushed on the top of the back stack, and we can then grab the, the different value of this intent through uh, the uh, inside of the onCreate method. So, you have to understand the life cycle of your activity. Uh, to do the things in the right place. I mean, if you want to access some element inside of your GUI while the GUI is not visible, it will fail. So you have to learn the life cycle of your application. So this is the life cycle of your activity. First of all, the onCreate method is called. Then your application is created. Then this application is started. And then it can be resumed. OK? Pause, resume, pause, resume, pause, resume. And then the, your application is stopped. OK? For each of these steps, you can override a method and do something. So there are a lot of things you have to do uh, when you have this method. On the onCreate method, you have to instantiate your GUI and to bind events. We can see that at this time, the GUI is not visible, is not killable. So you cannot kill this application when it's, uh, it's in the onCreate method. Then there is the onStart, onRestart. This is where you will initialize your value, load persistent data, and restart sensor. Then, on resume, you can display the GUI. OK? <coughs> From this point, your application is visible. It displays on the screen. Then you can pause your application. This is where you have to save, to perform persistences, to stop animation, to stop services. You are not forced to do that. but since your application is going to background, because you received an email, you reply to a text or something, you have to save memory and save energy of your phone. So this is where you have to save these things. Then on the onStop music, onStop method, sorry, you have to free the RAM, and then you delete the UI and free resources. Okay? So you you, you can log things inside of this different method 
in order to understand the, the behavior of your application. So to log things, uh, you can e use uh, the log cat. And the log cat has multiple levels of, uh, of, um, of logs. You can log debug, uh, log verbose, log info, log warning, or log error. And according to this different level of logs, you will have more or less details. OK, so the best practice when you have uh, some activity is to define a, a, a tag. And this tag will be used in every log. So when you are looking for a bug or something, you just have to, f to write log.v tag something. And then you can use logs to check where your bug is. So to sum up, the most important thing here is the role of the backstack. You have to understand how the backstack works. Uh, you have to understand how intents works. And you have to understand that intents are asynchronous messages. This can be used to run activities, but to start services or many other things. Uh, we had a quick overview of intents just for starting activities. But keep in mind that uh, this intent can be used for something else. Uh, you have to understand the life cycle of your activity. It's really important to know where things can be started, stopped, or destroyed. And finally, you can use DDMS, which is a logger for debugging and tracing your application.